Let's go ahead and see how powerful this Flipper Zero is and what kind of capabilities it has to make you aware of various vulnerabilities in technology. Hopefully you're able to snag one of these as they are super hard to come by as shipment has stopped to the United States. Now, before we get into this, you can fully use the device as is, but there are a lot of different custom firmware options available. These firmwares provide extra capabilities and payloads straight out the box. Now here we have the Unleashed firmware. One important thing to note is to read this bolded text. Now, primarily beginning with this software is for experimental purposes only and is not meant for any illegal activity or purposes. The next thing you have to remember is this line here. And that is to be sure that you are not transmitting on restricted frequencies per your region. After that, we can keep scrolling down and see what exactly changes with this firmware. And I can go into it, we can discuss the fuzzer plugin or the custom games or the different bad USB keyboard layouts. Uh, but I'll go ahead and let you guys cover this uh, on your own time. And we'll move on to the next one. And that is Rogue Master. And personally, out of the two, uh, I opted for this firmware. It's a little buggy at times, but it includes a ton of payloads and different plugins that the community provides. Uh, again, you can see them all here, and I'll let you guys just briefly go over it on your own time instead of me just reading line from line. The biggest debate right now is Unleashed versus Rogue Master. Now, I'll be making follow-up videos on how to install them and then some of their different capabilities that they provide. Um, it's really shooter's choice. I went with Rogue Master. It's a little buggy, but it's manageable. After you decide which custom firmware, if that's the route you wanna take, your next step is to download QFlipper. Now, this is an application that allows you to manage your Flipper Zero over the UI on your desktop. After you install this, uh, you're going to want to update it to the latest firmware version. And if, as you can see, mine is already updated to the latest one. If not, you would be prompted here to update it. It's pretty straightforward. Some other cool things you can do with this application is that you're able to pass through the screen to the UI. And you're also able to navigate it using your keyboard uh, with various injects. Now, another thing you may wanna do is back up your current firmware. Uh, this is just in case you accidentally mess up something or corrupt something in the process. You have a backup that you can easily restore. Another feature, you're able to manage the file system through the UI. You can download things, upload them, etc. The last thing we'll look at before hopping into the demo is that the Flipper Zero also has a mobile application that you can manage the device either through updates or actually performing different RF actions through the device itself. So first we're gonna take a look at the sub gigahertz capability. Now this integrated module can read, store, and simulate remote controls and broadcast in the frequency range of about 300 to 930 megahertz. Uh, there are a ton of devices that you can interact with, uh, from garage doors, remote controls, smart lights, etc. So first, we are going to demo with a car key fob, and then go to the frequency analyzer tab to see what exactly this car key fob is transmitting on. Once we hit the lock button, we can see that the frequency is 433.888. Knowing this information, we can then go back to read raw, and in here, in the top left corner, we may have to change this frequency in the config option to what we saw in the frequency analyzer in order to read it correctly. But we can go ahead and leave ours at default. Now for this analyzer, once we hit record, we see that our key fob is utilizing rolling codes. Now, since it is using rolling codes, if you were able to isolate the frequency before it reaches its destination, you were able to replay this and lock your car. But be warned, you need to be careful about desync. Now, if you are still persistent on trying to replay this code, some of my military viewers may be familiar with this method to isolate radio frequencies. 
if you take a piece of aluminum foil and fold it in half to create a double layer, fold it again, and then create a pocket, you're able to drop in your fob and your flipper zero into here and then click record through the pocket and it should isolate it from reaching the destination. But you're probably gonna want a larger piece of aluminum foil to fit both of the Vs. So for our next capability, the Flipper Zero is compatible with low frequency radio frequency identification, which is used in supply chain tracking systems, access control, and animal chips, for example. LF cards don't often offer high levels of security in contrast to NFC cards. Uh, these numerous form factors include plastic cards, key fobs, tags, and animal chips. So we're able to read these cards and then go ahead and emulate these to replay them. It's pretty straightforward. The Flipper Zero is also compatible with NFC, which is used in bank cards, access cards, and smart cards for public transportation. Now these offer encryption, authentication, and complete two-way data transfer and feature complicated protocol architectures. Now I don't have any of my NFC tags currently on me, but for this demo, I do have an Android device. So when we go ahead and attempt to read this NFC off the Android device, we can see that it is an NFC A. And when we go, we can either save it or re-emulate this tag. The Flipper Zero can communicate with gadgets that use infrared light to transmit commands. Now, it can learn and save infrared remote controls or use universal remotes to operate TVs, audio players, or air conditioned units. Now, for this example, I have a small remote that controls this light. And now, if we go ahead and click Learn New Remote and click the On button, we can go ahead and save this, see that a new remote is created, and then also add the off button. And then we can go ahead and save this as well. Now we can replay these and see that it controls the light accordingly. The Flipper Zero can also act as a bad USB device, recognized by computers as a human interface device such as a keyboard. A bad USB may do any action that requires physical access, which includes changing system settings, obtaining data, starting reverse shells, etc. It is accomplished by carrying out a series of instructions written in DuckyScript. As you can see here, it opened Notepad and drew Mona Lisa. So what do you think? I've only showed you a few examples of what's possible with this device. So I hope you learned something new and the different capabilities that the Flipper Zero has. It is true that it isn't as powerful as other tools available like the HackRF or Proxmark, but there are some features available in this that I wanna show later. But let me know in the comments what other options you want me to cover like the UTF, GPIO, iButton, or even like this music player that exists here that we can see one of these. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Throw me a like, hack the YouTube algorithm for me. Cheers, I'll catch you guys on the next one.